Hello, 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 artists. Welcome to week two. I know, how was it already week two? Did we just have class like two days ago? Yes, because the class is on a Friday, so you've already done one week and we're going into week two. If you missed last Friday's class, don't worry. I finally have updated the syllabi syllabus all the way. And now I'm running it through uh, the AI reader, which I like to use the Snoop Dogg reader because I find the AI Snoop Dogg voice to be very pleasing. There's also Gwyneth Paltrow. There's also the Lord of the Rings guy. There's like somebody else. So anyways, in class, we'll go over it and, and I can ask more questions about if people have a AI voice preference. But for now, it's going to be Uncle Snoop will be reading the syllabi to you. So also, this is our first digital class. So why is it called a digital class? There's three ways we have class in this class, which could be confusing to someone, but to me, it totally makes sense. We have in-person, which means like in-person, baby, face to face. I gotta see that smile. Then we have digital. This is where you gotta be autonomous. A huge part of being an artist is being autonomous. Like, babies, ain't nobody gonna be on you making sure that you're getting your work done, making sure that you are going back and checking with clients, sending in invoices. I struggle with some of those things myself because once the gig's over, I'm on to the next and I forget about the whole, like, I have to tell them to pay me and how much they need to pay me and all the kit fees and mileage and things like that. So part of this whole, like the overarching program um, for this entertainment design technology degree is to prepare you for the industry. And one huge, huge, huge part of that is being autonomous. I know, I love that word. I remember writing my college essay and I was like, I am very autonomous and I like to do things on my own and be independent. And yep, that's very true. But it has helped me in my career because I don't need someone to be on me to do things, but I do have to put them on my calendar and you know get self-motivated. So that's digital class. And then we have Zoom class where again, I wanna see your face. I wanna see your face. I wanna have your cake. Gotta have your camera on. I want you to have your mic on because we're having a virtual class. So technically speaking, in pedagogical terms, we have synchronous class. So that's Zoom class and in-person class. And then we have asynchronous, asynchronistic class class. I know that's such a weird, awkward word. The first time I heard it, I was like, what kind of class? That just means that we're not meeting at the same time. But that doesn't mean that there isn't something due. And just so you know, there's something due every week. Why? Because the school requires it. It's part of your attendance. So of course you have attendance when we're in person, you have attendance with Zoom, but also turning in your homework um, on time for those digital classes counts as um, attendance. Another thing I wanted to note, if you are looking on Canvas, um, because the skill drills are points, it's actually a test of how well can you follow the instructions that you've been given all the way through to complete the task or to learn the skill. So in Canvas, they are listed as um, quizzes. That was the only way I could figure out how to give them points, but also not make it like another um, like weekly page. I just wanted it to be something different so that you would see that like this date is when we're doing this skill drill. So make sure you were in class those days. I mean, you should be in class every time we have in-person class because we only have Right now, I think we have nine, but that number can change depending on my schedule because again, I'm only an adjunct professor, so I have to make money outside. I have so let's jump into week two, self-portrait jacket project. So again, if you missed class on Friday, don't worry about it. It was a lot of tea time, this time, chit chat, going over the syllabi. I really kind of like, we probably should make the first class a little bit more productive. However, I think that getting to know each other and laughing is actually a part of the magic of being an artist because you all at some point are gonna have to collaborate with each other, especially when we move into module three, you all are gonna be each other's model. So you're gonna have to exchange phone numbers and make sure that your model shows up to class and make sure that you show up to class you're gonna be somebody else's model. And then in module five, a little less about like a group project, but you can't 
accurately plaster your own face. So you're going to need to rely on a classmate. Um, so that's why I think it's really important that we have like breakfast, we have tea, we have these things that um, help us kind of have like a little bit of um, community and um, feel the, the way that I think that schools should be run is that you should feel like you are in an ensemble of other peers and people of different ages, backgrounds, where you all are on this learning journey together, right? So ta speaking of self-discovery and learning journeys, you all have a PhD in you. Nobody knows you better than you know you, truly. And this project is all about you. I want you to dig deep, go in, find funny stories, find sad stories, find this stories, find all different kinds of stories, put them together as we are learning how to communicate with non uh, verbal, non-letters, although some people do put words on their things and that's totally fine. Uh, but you know, I just don't want to manifest and be like, hello, my name is John. I was born in Texas in 1945. That's not what we want. But if you, but if your project or your story is that you are a cowboy in West Texas from 1945, then I want to see something that's going to like, how do we know it's Texas? How do we know it's the 40s? How do we know it's this? Like, is it by the jacket you picked? Is it the things that you added? So there's additive design where we like, like this sweater is very much additive design, right? Where if I were to take it all off and cut holes into it and burn it, that would be subtractive design right so that's something that I really want you to play with like how are you adding big things to it and how are you taking things away what are you deciding to tell and what are you deciding not to tell ring lights like <laughs> you can't take all this energy I guess so the first thing there are a lot of things to watch so start your homework now it's hard world building versus soft world building a study of Studio Ghibli love Studio Ghibli Frida, filmed in 2002 by one of my favorite artists, Julie Taymor. And if you are a Disney and Lion King fan, then you have seen lots of her work. But before, she was known for The Lion King and that awful, awful, awful musical, Turn Off the Dark, the Spider-Man musical, where people were literally flying and falling out of the sky. Um, she did this film and also another film called Titus Andronicus, Beautiful work. She's one of my favorite artists. Um, I don't have this in here just because I'm a fan of the director and also the artist that she is creating the story around. Um, but I like the textures. I like the layers. I like that um, to see the juxtaposition between like Diego Rivero's work, which is like his work is very much like I am a Mexican man. I am proud of Mexico. I am from Mexico. Like his work is just like, you, you know exactly what you're getting with Diego Rivera. It's like, mm -mm -mm. there's there's no mystery to his work. However, it's Frida Kahlo's work. There's lots of mystery. There's lots of metaphor. There's lots of emotions to it. And so I think that it's interesting to not only like see her work from a different angle, but also get to know other artists. Um, because as an artist myself, I am constantly learning about other artists. Um, so the next film is from, it's one of those Netflix abstracts, but I think this one is really, really good. Um, abstract, The Art of Design by Paula Schur. Schur. Uh, graphic Design. Now she has a newer video or movie or documentary about her art that's come out. I haven't seen it yet, but... Um, I'm going to, for now, we're going to stick with this one. And again, I added this in because the way of which she is sort of like a left brain artist, um, she created the New York subway system and also everything you've ever seen with typeface font, creating different pictures or images within text that create different images. She is the person that created it. And I think that we owe so much to graphic design. Like we wouldn't have so many things like Canva. Like there's so many programs that really you probably could all tie back to her design philosophy because she's such a big influence in our world. Then we're going to watch Toni Morrison, The Pieces I Am. Again, this is kind of a little bit of, of similar to Frida Kahlo, but a different type of artist, um, a little bit more modern and American. 
Now, Toni Morrison is like one of the greatest artists that ever lived. That's just not my opinion, but she has won multiple big awards. She is a, um, not just a poet laureate, but one of the few Americans that's ever won like a Nobel Prize in literature because most, most people in the world think that Americans can't read and they actually would be right, especially in Florida. Anyways, um... <laughs> I just love the way that people talk about her writing, the way that she talked about storytelling. And she also was a professor. So when she speaks upon how to write, how to break things down, she's speaking from experience, lived experience, teaching experience, like it just amazing. I love her work. So I want you to sort of like take in all of these artists, all of these big artists and try to see kind of like, how you can tell your story. Like one person told it this way, one person told it that way. And so, you know, see, like it, give it, it, these, these are just tools for you to understand um, how to go deeper within yourself. So then step two is to write down your personal stories. However many stories you want, you could tell a story in this arm, a different story in that arm, a story on the inside, story on the back. It's up to you. Now, this is gonna be a really interesting mood board because it's all about you, baby. Uh, so if you wanna use family pictures, pictures of your dog, your grandmother, your best friends, uh, or if you were like, I wanna hyper-focus on my absolute love of this thing that I that was really obscure when I was 10 and I wanna tell all the stories about that, that's totally fine too, that maybe your mood board is more about that. Um, and then design your jacket. You can use the croaky that is in, um, what is this? The assignment, sure. <laughs> In this week's assignment, uh, or you can draw your own. You can print it out. You can you can do whatever. But just use that as a croaky, just something that gives you like a base design of the jacket. I also want to see the back. You can find you can Google fashion croakies and then put in whatever you need and you will find plenty of them. There's nothing wrong with using a croaky. Lots and lots of fashion and costume designers use them all the time because we're artists. And so it's like our art is about the design. Our art isn't proving to you that we can draw beautiful blazers and jackets over and over and over again that are always proportionate. Um, that's something that I really had to let go of, just like, like take a breath. You don't have to be perfect and good at every single art thing just to make art. It's okay that drawing is not my strongest point, that sewing is, but that, but can I draw? Yes. Can I sew? Yes. Would If I had a choice between sewing something and drawing something, I'm probably gonna pick sewing something because that is where I feel like I have the most flow, but that's okay with drawing. Like drawing's always gonna be something that I love and I'm gonna keep learning how to draw for the rest of my life. So, And some days you just wanna trace something so you can get on down the road down to Designville. I guess that's, that's where the road takes you, to Designville. Uh, okay, and then I have this little note that says like, be sure to be re realistic with your time. You can't watch a like four full movies in one night and get all of this done. So how about you start with one tonight, one another night, work on your mood board, and then by the time Friday afternoon rolls around, you'll have all your work together and you'll turn it in. So that's what I wanna see. I wanna see your personal stories, your mood board and your jacket design. Those are the items that I wanna see turn in for this week's digital class. Okay, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, so we'll get one of these every single week as like a way to keep the class together. And because I'm dyslexic, I don't always like reading and writing all the time when we have media and other tools to do such things like reading and writing for us. Uh, anyways, have a great week. You can email, text, call me as you please. Um, I will be on set Thursday and Friday. I'll be on set Tuesday and Wednesday I'll be prepping. So those two days I have more time to get back to you. The other two days you might text me, I might be like, I'll get back to you later, and then I'll get back to you later kind of a day, but I'm still here if you need me. Anyways, have a great week, and I will see you in person for week three. Bye.